Good morning. Welcome to Daily Prayer. This is Wednesday. We begin with the opening sentence. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done and have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. The Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. We'll now have the Psalm and the Old Testament reading. The Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 8 and 11. We will begin with Psalm 8. O Lord, our governor, how excellent is your name in all the world. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies. That you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, even the works of your fingers. The moon and the stars which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him? the Son of Man, that you visit him. You made him little lower than the angels. To crown him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. And you have put all things in subjection under his feet. All sheep and oxen. Even the beasts of the field. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea. And whatsoever walks through the paths of the seas. O Lord our governor, how excellent is your name in all the world. And now we will do Psalm 11. In the Lord I put my trust. How then can you say to my soul, flee as a bird unto the hill? For behold, the ungodly bend their bow and make ready their arrow upon the string. That they may secretly shoot at those who are true of heart. For the foundations will be cast down. And what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes consider the poor. And his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord tests the righteous. But the ungodly and those who delight in wickedness his soul abhors. Upon the ungodly he shall rain snares fire and brimstone, storm and tempest. This shall be their portion to drink. For the righteous Lord loves righteousness. 
The upright shall behold his face. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy, beginning with the seventh chapter, the first verse. When the Lord your God brings you into the land that you are entering to take possession of it and clears away many nations before you, the Hittites, the Girgasites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations more numerous and mightier than you, and when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you defeat them, then you must devote yourself to their complete destruction. You shall make no covenant with them and show no mercy to them. You shall not intermarry with them, giving your daughters to their sons or taking their daughters for your sons, for they would turn away your sons from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of the Lord would be kindled against you and he would quickly destroy you. But thus shall you deal with them. You shall break down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars and chop down their ashram and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you. For you were the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repays to their face those who hate him by destroying them. He will not be slack with one who hates him. He will repay him to his face. You shall therefore be careful to do the commandment and the statutes and the rules that I command you today. And because you listen to these rules and keep and do them, the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the steadfast love that he swore to your fathers. He will love you bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, your grain and your wine and your oil, and also the increase of your herds and the young of your flock in the land that he swore to your fathers to give you. You shall be blessed above all peoples. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your livestock. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness, and none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you knew, will he inflict on you, but he will lay them on all who hate you. And you shall consume all the peoples that the Lord your God will give over to you. Your eye shall not pity them, neither shall you serve their gods, for that would be a snare to you. If you say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember that the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt the great trials that your eyes saw, the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. So will the Lord your God do to all the peoples of whom you were afraid. Moreover, the Lord your God will send hornets among them, until those who are left and hide themselves from you are destroyed. You shall not be in dread of them, for the Lord your God is in your midst, a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will clear away these nations before you little by little. You may not make an end of them at once, lest the wild beasts grow too numerous for you. But the Lord your God will give them over to you and throw them into great confusion until they are destroyed and he will give their kings into your hand, and you shall make their name perish from under the heaven. No one shall be able to stand against you until you have destroyed them. The carved images of their gods you shall burn with fire. 
You shall not covet the silver or the gold that is on them, or take it for yourselves, lest you be ensnared by it. For it is an abomination to the Lord your God. And you shall not bring an abominable thing into your house and become devoted to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest and abhor it, for it is devoted to destruction. The word of the Lord. The Tadeum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death, and open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. We'll now have the second reading. A reading from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke beginning with the fifth chapter, the first verse. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats in the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we have toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. While he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. And Jesus charged him to tell no one but to go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as Moses commanded for a proof to them. But now even more the report about him went abroad and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. The Gospel of the Lord. The Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. 
You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We'll now say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. O Lord, guide those who govern us. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. The collect of the day. O God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us by your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor run into any danger and that, guided by your Spirit, we may do what is righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now have a time of intercession and thanksgiving. We continue to pray for our state, our city. Pray for protection from the coronavirus. We pray for those who are afflicted, that they will be healed. We pray for families. We pray for those who are out of work right now, that you will provide for them. Continue to pray for our church. We pray that we'll be able to worship together soon. We give thanks that churches are beginning to open across the nation. Amen. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you've made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Looking at the first lesson from Deuteronomy, we see the planning that God is putting before his people before they entered the promised land. They, they are to possess that land that is before them and following God is key to the possession of the land, following what he says in detail, not just the, the bits that are easy, all of it. God has a great future for his people, but it's through the, the way of trust and obedience that God is looking for. Then if you fast forward from this scene, which is around 1300 BC-ish, to the time of Jesus, what, what a, a difference there is. It, it, there was a, a, a people that were called to follow the Lord, and, and God was in their, their midst wonderful promises of what they would do when they possessed the land. And, and now we have people who are demon possessed at the time of Jesus. I mean, what had happened to, to God's people? Well, you know, they, they, they'd lost their first love. Uh, a, n a number of them had uh, wandered away and uh, become idolaters and had introduced practices that God never commanded never wanted. It was always through faith in him that you were declared right with God. What a departure for God's people. And yet, in his mercy, Jesus Christ arrived at just the right time to redeem them from their sin, from their lostness, from their isolation, from the separation that had come between God and them. We find in, in Luke 5, a series of miracles that are getting people's attention and getting the attention of the disciples like Peter with the big fish hall and being a fisherman. Uh, the fishing techniques of Jesus were uncanny, supernatural, and that's why you get that response of, of of Peter. Depart from me, from for I am a sinful man, O Lord. When he sees the big catch, it's like this had to come from God. I, I'm I, I can't I can't believe this because it says in verse nine that for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch the fish that were taken, and then. Jesus says, do not be afraid. From, from now on, you will be catching men. What a wonderful picture uh, of uh, what Peter uh, would do uh, for the Lord and how costly it would be. We see the div divine activity taking place as God's kingdom is now beginning and taking shape with a healing and with uh, people being freed of, of uh, diseases like leprosy, which uh, was a, a grab bag phrase covering all sorts of skin ailments, but uh, leprosy itself was 
uh, not treatable until uh, modern times. And uh, it was uh, a, a terrible uh, disease, but it was also a social blight as well that you had to self-isolate from others and you were considered to be ritually unclean. So you had the medical aspect compounded by the spiritual aspect that you had to be isolated because you were spiritually unclean. And then it was pointed out to you by the religious authorities that you were unclean and it was probably because you were cursed by God. You did something or your family did something. I mean, you, know, you just don't get leprosy just because. I mean, that's, they didn't have any modern theories of, you know, disease transmission, bacteria, anything like that. No, they just described it to him. Well, you must be cursed by God, which is pretty horrible, you know, um, uh, idea. But but it was prevalent uh, back uh, in the ancient world. Uh, and, and and Jesus heals, demonstrating God's power over disease. And uh, I'm always intrigued at, in, in passages like this when. The, the crowds are gathering, and, and then Jesus pulls back. In verse 15, it says, uh, But now even more the report about him went abroad, and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. Well, exactly. There's no urgent care, no hospital system back then. Healing? Yeah. And it's through Jesus? I, I want to I see him. But verse 16 says, but he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. Jesus needed to spend time with his heavenly father to hear from him, to, to be with him. And, and he did this at times that seemed odd to us because we think when the crowds are gathering, well, that's when I need to be there and that's when I need to, to minister but Jesus saw as his first priority, not the demands of his social environment, but his obligation and uh, to his heavenly father out of love for his heavenly father. And that's really a word for us as well, isn't it? That in the, in the, the press of life, things that, that are going on, to take time to withdraw, to spend time with the Lord. This is what we're doing with these sessions via video is to take time apart to spend with the Lord, to hear his word, to pray, and then to meditate on what God says in his word and what that means to us and how uh, we can look at God's word and applying it looking to apply God's word and, and to understand what, what it's saying to us, how the gospel message of good news comes to us from Christ and his promises transform us because of their goodness and because they, they, they speak truth to our circumstances that despite what's going on with the coronavirus that our chief obligation is to to know god to love him and make him known the people who were there at the time of jesus had lost their first love it's a word to us as well and if we want to continue to be in the Lord's presence, it re requires our presence. It requires a conscious effort to come before him, to pray, and to trust what he says to us in his word. Amen. I want to thank David and Terry for uh, reading and responding today. Today, we're going to be having uh, a Galatians class on video, and then there's going to be a discussion. 
time at 7 p.m. A number of you have reached out to me with requests and you'll be receiving an email notification of the link to enter into the discussion portion of the meeting this evening at 7 p.m. So I hope to see some of you there this evening. For the rest of you, see you tomorrow. God bless.